Hi, I'm Jeff Hajek, the owner and founder of Election. This video is part of my lean training system. It was originally released as a DVD a long time ago, but times have changed and the look of some of these LTS videos is now a bit dated. The content is still spot on though. So rather than just discontinue the line, I am posting the majority of each of the 36 videos here with the remainder available at Velaction Videos. That's our video service where you can download a wealth of supporting content and watch subscriber-only videos. I recommend subscribing and hitting the notification button if you want to make sure you don't miss any new content. I would also really appreciate if you would hit the like button if this video is helpful and you want to see more content similar to it. The like button helps us get found on YouTube, but it also lets us figure out where you want us to put our future effort. Now enjoy the free version of this video. Welcome to Velaction Continuous Improvement's presentation on the cause and effect diagram. My name is Jeff Hajek and I am the owner and founder of Velaction. I am also the author of the book, What Do You Mean I Gotta Be Lean? Before I go any further, I would like to clear something up. The cause and effect diagram is also known as the Ishikawa diagram after the man who popularized it. This tool also has a third name, the fishbone diagram. The reason this final name stuck will be very obvious in just a few minutes when we start looking at the tool. As you watch this video, I'd like you to keep in mind two basic objectives. I would like you to gain a basic understanding of how to create a cause and effect diagram. I'd also like you to walk away with an understanding of how the cause and effect diagram can help you solve problems. Let's start off by explaining what the cause and effect or fishbone diagram is. In a nutshell, it's an organizational tool to help with your problem solving. It helps spur deeper thought about the underlying causes of problems. It also lets you see visually how the various causes are related. So now let's move on and draw the framework for a very basic cause and effect diagram. You'll almost always see the effect or the problem that you're researching written on the right hand side. Now truth be told, there's no real reason for this. But if you do a little bit of research, you'll find that nearly everybody puts it on the right hand side. So I recommend doing it just for standardization, but again, there's no real purpose behind it. At this point, you'll draw the telltale shape that gives the fishbone diagram its name. Start with a long horizontal line and add your six spines coming out of it at an angle. Each of these spines will contain a grouping of very similar causes. The most common set of groupings is known as the six M's. This is typically used to work on problems in a shop floor environment. The six M's are Materials, Methods, Machines, Mother Nature, Manpower, and Measurements. Note that in some cases you may see manpower switched out with a more gender neutral word. At this point, you've got the basic structure for your fishbone diagram. Now, as you start coming up with effects, you'll be able to add them with horizontal lines off of each of these spines. Keep in mind that while the 6Ms is a very common set of headers, it is by no means the only one that you can use. There is in fact an alternative that is commonly used in office environments. Like the 6Ms, this set all starts with the same letter. The 6Ps are People, Process, Policy, Plant, Program, and Product. Like the 6Ms, the 6Ps provides you with a good starting point for your cause and effect diagram. I hope you are getting something valuable out of this video. If you want to get more out of this program, we recommend watching it on Velaction Videos. You'll be able to watch the entire video, mostly ad-free, and view subscriber-only programs. You'll also have access to a load of continuous improvement downloads. Okay, by this point, you should be getting a good idea of what a fishbone diagram looks like. But the question now is, what does it do for you? Well, the first thing is, when used in conjunction with brainstorming, the fishbone diagram helps you generate more ideas. The visual layout of the fishbone helps you focus your thinking. The layout is also very well suited for helping you build upon existing ideas. 
Its structure lets you piggyback one idea off of another as you flesh out your fishbone diagram. And finally, because the fishbone diagram is so well organized, it makes it very easy to transition to the improvement phase where you will actually start acting to resolve some of these issues you've identified. Of course, the fishbone diagram is only effective if you actually have ideas to put on it. So the question is, where do all of these ideas come from? Well, the first one, as I mentioned earlier, is brainstorming. The collective power of multiple minds working together can create a flood of ideas. There are two basic ways to use brainstorming with a cause and effect diagram. The first is to come up with ideas and post them directly onto the fishbone. While this is efficient, it does have one drawback. It can create a situation where part of the group dominates the discussion. Alternatively, you can have a separate brainstorming session where each person is required to come up with a set number of ideas. Those ideas are then combined and added to the fishbone diagram in a separate step. Of course, brainstorming ideas don't simply come out of thin air. Personal experience plays a big role in the quality of the ideas that you'll generate. A well-rounded, cross-functional team tends to provide the most comprehensive fishbone diagrams. The people working in the area that you're looking at will also have a wealth of ideas. Talk to them about the issues that they're facing. And while you're talking to them, keep your eyes open. There are a few things that provide better information than first-hand observation. If you are doing your fishbone diagram as part of a Kaizen event, you will probably take part in a very focused look at the process that you will be improving. This observation exercise is known as a waste walk or as a process walk. And of course, no problem-solving effort would be complete without a very close look at your data. This analysis will likely give you several issues to add to your fishbone diagram. As part of the Lean Training System this video comes from, we offer a variety of Lean LEGO training packages. These include our Lean LEGO Flow Simulation, Mistake Proofing or Pokeyoke Lean LEGO Exercise, and our Visual Controls and 5S Lean LEGO Exercise. We've also got an Office Flow Simulation for those not implementing continuous improvement on the shop floor. Click the links in the description below or click on cards that pop up on this video to learn more. We'll also add links at the end. Okay, now that you've got a better idea about what a fishbone diagram is and what it's used for, let's take a bit of a step backwards and talk about where you should do it. If you're doing a fishbone diagram individually, pen and paper is always a good option. But obviously, that might be a little hard if you're working with a team. In those situations, you'll need something bigger, such as a whiteboard. Now, whiteboards are fine if you have a fairly simple fishbone diagram that you're doing. But as they get more complex, you'll do a lot of moving ideas around. That can be a bit tedious to do on a whiteboard. Whiteboards also have the drawback that they can be a bit limited in size. Cause and effect diagrams for big problems can become rather extensive. And the final problem with whiteboards is that they lack permanence. You probably will not want your fishbone diagram tying up your whiteboard for the rest of your project. A long roll of butcher paper or craft paper spread along the wall solves the problems of both permanence and space. Some people like to write the issues directly on the butcher paper with markers. Another option that works well, especially if you're doing brainstorming, is to write the issues down on post-it notes. It then becomes a relatively simple task to move all of your ideas around into a logical order. The last medium for a cause and effect diagram is the computer. It does have the advantage of being very neat and being easy to transmit the output. The downside is that the programs used to create a fishbone diagram can be fairly unwieldy. You often end up seeing the operator fumbling through the task of trying to create a fishbone diagram using PowerPoint or Excel. But the real downside to using a computer is that it's very impersonal. There's something about the post-it note method on the wall that gets teams really engaged. 
you seldom get the same level of enthusiasm watching somebody type. This video comes from Volaction's Lean Training System, which takes a module-based approach to learning about continuous improvement. Modules include a PowerPoint presentation and student guides for every video, plus there are many exercises and quizzes as well. There's also a whole host of supporting content in the form of terms in our Continuous Improvement Companion and downloadable articles. Our modules are currently available in our store and as downloads at Volaction Videos. Click the links in the description below or click on the cards that pop up on this video to learn more. We'll also add links at the end. Now that you're armed with a better understanding of fishbone diagrams, let's walk you through an example. Now what I've found over the years is that if I use work-related examples, people either tune out if they don't think it's relevant to them, or if it is a relevant example, they tend to focus on how it doesn't match exactly. So instead, Let's focus on something that we can all relate to, getting to work on time. One of the possible issues that caused me to be late to work is that my alarm clock might have been set wrong. And that seems like something that would fall into the measurements category. Just like getting to work on time, many of your processes at work also probably require accurate information. If the instruments you use to gather that information are flawed, you'll end up with problems. Manpower issues are basically errors that occur when a process exists but it is not followed. One warning here though, be careful about applying issues to manpower. In many cases, the reason that an issue exists is because the process is not a very good one. The Mother Nature category contains all of your environmental issues. Obviously, you can't control the weather, but you can look at how you respond, how you react to the weather conditions. For example, here in Washington State, where Volaction is located, mountain passes are frequently closed during the winter months. Companies might respond to this by carrying a bit of extra safety stock in their inventory. Machines are simply the tools of your trade. The obvious machine that you use to get to work on time is your car but several others probably play a role in your timeliness. Your garage door opener, your coffee pot, and even the stoplights along your route all are machines that affect your travel. Methods are simply the variety of processes that link to the effect that you are looking at. I already mentioned that most manpower issues are actually problems with methods. But methods are also a catch-all for most of the other categories as well. For example, your car may break down because of poor maintenance, and that's a method. The way you plan to deal with upcoming snowstorms is a method. And the process of setting your clock, again, is a method. Be ready for a heavy bias toward methods as you do your fishbone diagram. But on the bright side, as you start diving into the issues in this category, you tend to find a lot of low-hanging fruit. This final category, materials, is most common in shop floor cause and effect diagrams, but it does occasionally show up in other areas. In this late to work example, getting the low octane coffee can be a problem. At this point, you can continue drilling down into these issues. Simply draw another branch, or even multiple branches, off of each of these issues you've identified. And in fact, you can even add a branch on one of these secondary branches. In this example, you would look at why your car broke down, or why you accidentally drank decaffeinated coffee. In many ways, the cause and effect diagram becomes something like an interconnected set of five whys analyses. Why were you late to work? Because your car broke down. Why did your car break down? Because you never changed the oil. Why didn't you ever change the oil? Well, you could answer that question and continue this fishboning. As you can see, this process is very similar to the one you use when you're doing a 5 whys analysis. And that's all there is to it. Of course, it's always nice to have a few tips to help you avoid potential pitfalls. The first tip is to do a separate fishbone diagram for each of the major effects that you're looking at. This is a fairly time-intensive tool. If you get too wrapped up in doing analysis, you'll have very little time left to make improvements. 
The second tip is that when you are posting your butcher board up on the wall for your cause and effect diagram, make it about twice as long as you think you need, especially if you are doing this as a team exercise. The categories never seem to come out evenly. Some effects are material centric. Some are closely related to machine failures. The problem is you might not realize which one this is until the exercise is well underway. The cause and effect diagram can get sloppy in a hurry if you don't have enough space. The next tip is to have a process flow chart handy. This can help spur more ideas during the brainstorming session. It also comes in handy as you start making improvements. You may notice that several of the issues you identify cluster in just a few process steps. Thanks for watching this extended free version of our Lean Training System module video. If you want to watch the whole video, check it out at Bill Action Videos. If you want to make sure you don't miss the next LTS video that we post, please be sure to subscribe down below. We also always appreciate likes as it helps us get viewed more and makes us keep adding additional content. Thanks for watching and best wishes on your continuous improvement journey.